Dear Father Simon and the Heavenly Few, says Josh, I seek forgiveness for what transpired at a Dads and Lads scout camp a few years ago. Dashing from work to make the scout camp location at the specified time, I was greeted by ten other parents and their offspring, a few of whom I'd spoken to when picking my son up from the weekly scout group meeting. They seemed, on balance, a reasonable bunch, apart from one guy. The campsite consisted of two blocks, a dining area and a shower block. In front of these was a grassy area, all of which was then surrounded by woods. All very Hunger Games, don't you know? We were told that before tea was served, we would have to erect the tents. So we worked as a team, ensuring the non-campers were given the help and guidance that they needed. After a less than helpful tea of beans and sausages, the young lads were presented with an egg, which they had to keep safe until the following day by hiding it in a secure location within the site. If your egg was located by another team, they were officially allowed to smash it, thus putting you out of this particular contest. So not very Hunger Games, which seem to revolve around <laughs> killing people, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> These are just squashing eggs. Yes. Hunger Games, but with eggs. Not quite the same jeopardy, really, <laughs> no, is there? Really. With the feeling of camaraderie still prevailing, it was mutually agreed that we would not search and destroy each other's eggs. So they're even less like Hunger oh, right. Games. Whilst the lads had been busy hiding the eggs, two parents suggested a whip round and then went to the local village to get some beverages and nibbles for when the kids were safely tucked up in bed. One parent, let's call him Leonard, <laughs> declined to contribute on the basis that he'd brought his own supply of what he suggested was superior wine to the standard plonk on offer at the local supermarket. This he drank from the one fluted wine glass that he'd brought. What? We raised our plastic cups to him and muttered. Later that night, as the dad settled down to a quiet drink or four, we all properly introduced ourselves. The conversation would eventually be dominated by Leonard, who exclaimed that he had to fly back, especially from the Middle East, to grace us with his presence, and suggested that he normally spent his time in far superior company, but felt that it was good character-building for him and his unfortunate son. Uh, Josh has added the unfortunate son. The name-dropping and locations visited became extremely tedious. The next day, the lads were told to retrieve their hidden eggs and that each father and son had to build a contraption for transporting the egg without it breaking. Well, finding two pieces of wood, I propped these up against a tree in a V-shape, ensuring the distance between would allow the egg to tumble down the sloping gradient uh, padding the bottom with a mixture of grass and moss to ensure that it wouldn't break. I was actually rather pleased with my effort and was astonished, therefore, to see Leonard had taken an elaborate pre-constructed pulley from his car, what? which he'd attached to two posts. The egg was then placed in a can with a hook and would go round the pulley at infinitum. The rest of the fathers called foul, but were advised that there was nothing in the rules about using your initiative. Leonard was later to reveal he'd spoken to other fathers who'd been on earlier camps, adding, fail to prepare... Prepare to fail. Oh, yeah, I, I love that saying. That's brilliant. It's well good. done. He's it's been it's on so a... good, doesn't it? Because it's the same words. Turn them around. That's right. Oh, it's genius. He's well done, a... Leonard. He's been on a course. Yeah, fabulous. The second contest was a dads and lads twin wicket competition. Now, Leonard had obviously been living the good life and could not be said to have the physique of a sportsman. Being drawn in the first round against him, I was expecting to hand out something of a thrashing to him, but instead he battered us all over the field, explaining rather smugly, I have to say, that he'd been in the first 11 and he was the captain at his school, don't you? you know. Anyway, our final task was to construct a bow and arrow with a penknife and some string. Well, now it gets a bit like the Hunger Games. We all dashed to the woods to find a nice piece of willow or ash or something. Leonard, as you might have guessed, walked in the opposite direction to the rest of us, to his car, and proceeded to take out an already constructed bow and arrow from his boot the again. Point. The archery contest was to take place after lunch, so all the pathetically constructed bows were lent against the dining block wall, including Leonard's beast of a bow. <clears throat> During lunch, I made the excuse of having to go to my car to get an aspirin or something, but actually sneaked around the back of the block and using a knife <clears throat> that I'd taken from the kitchen tent, I made a deep cut about a third of the way through the middle of Leonard's bow. Did a pretty decent piece of work, actually. My incision was not immediately visible to anybody, least of all Leonard. All of the fathers had already had their go and shot their arrow. The winning distance was only about 12 feet, so all eyes were on Leonard, whose arrow was expected to reach the woods easily. As he strained and pulled the string, or whatever it was, back as far as it would go, and the willow, or whatever it was, bent to his command, there was a sudden, loud, splintering crack as the bow 
snapped in two. The top half providing Leonard with a nasty whack across the chest, the bottom half spinning and catching him uncomfortably between the legs. He was incapable of speech for at least two minutes. <laughs> Eventually, Leonard's calls of foul went unheard as everybody fell about with laughter. And the laughing had subsided and the eyes had been wiped. Leonard was already leaving the site, his Mercedes kicking up dust in its wake. However, we need forgiveness, not for the prank played on Leonard, but for the trauma and long-lasting damage this may have caused his son. It wasn't his fault that he had a dipstick for a father. <laughs> So it's just, which you have to say actually is quite true. You know, yeah. it is, no, it is it, true. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with him. Uh, and obviously we changed a few names <clears> there, but I think we got the measure of Leonard quite early on when he refused to join in the, the wine buying. But having all that stuff in the boot of the car has got to be against the rules, you would have thought. Anyway, we'd they all They didn't got... bother to put it in the rules. They couldn't even imagine that somebody would bring along a fail to prepare bow. Prepare, prepare to, to fail. fail. Just remember that today, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That'll help. I do. It's difficult, isn't it? Because, of course, you're, you're not going to forgive... Um, you'd forgive Josh for uh, playing the prank on Leonard, but it is difficult because the son was probably deeply embarrassed about it. But he was probably more embarrassed about his father not getting into the Boy Scout spirit of things. So I think you are forgiven, Josh. There might be Scout Camp confessions out there, I think. I'm sure there are. Yeah. Um, yeah, Leonard's not going to come out of this story particularly well, is he? And, <laughs> no, um, no, no, really. and, and I, you know, part of me thinks that it's disgraceful. That this is, isn't showing initiative at all. All he's done is effectively cheat and, uh, and find out what he was going to have to do on the scout camp. But, honestly, I think, do you know what? I'd love to have done the same myself. I would have called up somebody who'd been on this camp before and said, right, what do they get you to do? Such a uh, right, competitive invol dad. Involving a pulley, really. Right, well, I'll just get myself a pulley. And then we have to make a <laughs> bow. I'm not doing that. Off I go down to the local, wherever you buy, bow, bow, bow and arrow shop. shop. Yeah. Um, so, but, but what is this turning up with a champagne flute? You've got your own glass flute. Yes. Who does that? Well, Leonard. To, you're clearly Lenny Leonard and is preparing to fail. Prepare for this, Leonard. You are not getting forgiven. Josh, you're definitely getting what, forgiven. What, just because of the wine yes, glass? Yes, because of the wine glass. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm not, I, I can deal with a bow and arrow, and I can deal with him having his own pulley <laughs> in the back of his car. But what are you doing? Bring, and no one else can have any of my wine because it's my wine. and it costs, Oh, shut up, Leonard, with your glass flute. <laughs> yes. 